Hi, it's Fred. In this video, let's talk about redox reactions. After watching this video, you can describe oxidation and reduction processes, understand the standard reduction potentials table, and balance redox reactions. Here are some common redox reactions in our everyday lives. In this unit, we will mainly discuss the rusting of iron and the how, of how batteries function. There are some subtopics in each topic. The first one is oxidation numbers. What is an oxidation number? It is the charge an atom would possess if the species was made up of ions. Uh, essentially, finding the oxidation number is like balancing a chemical equation, except that we balance the charges on a chemical species. Uh, the general rule to find an oxidation number of an atom is the sum of the positive charges and the negative charge that must equal the overall charge on the species. The definition of a of standard state is a condition in which an atom is normally found at, which is at 25 degrees Celsius and 101.3 kilopascal. Atoms at standard states um, all have an oxidation number of zero. There are four special cases. We, that we must consider when we calculate the oxidation number of an atom. First, elements always have an oxidation number of number of zero. For example, iron metal and oxygen gas. There's no charge here. Two, an ion by itself has an oxidation number equal to its own charge. For example, Iron 2 ion has an oxidation number of plus 2. 3. The oxidation number for oxygen is usually negative 2, except that in peroxide, such as hydrogen peroxide, barium peroxide, or sodium peroxide, it is negative 1. 4. The oxidation number for hydrogen is usually plus one, except in metal hydrides, uh, it is negative one. Examples of metal hydrides include lithium hydride and sodium hydride. Here are some practice problems. Find the oxidation number of phosphorus in H2P2O72 minus. If we let x be the oxidation number of phosphorus, we see that x equals plus 5. Now, whenever there is more than one ion, one, more than one of the same ion in the species, for example, there are two hydrogen ions, we multiply its charge by how many ions there are. Well, hydrogen is 2, so we multiply plus 1, that's the charge of the hydrogen, by 2. Find the oxidation number of carbon in C2H6. Again, if we let x equals the oxidation number of carbon, we find x equals negative 1.5. Notice that you can have a fraction as a charge. Now we move on to the meat of topic one. The uh, are, what are reduction and oxidation reactions? We're familiar with the combustion of methane gas. 
um, methane plus oxygen gas equals, I mean, produces carbon dioxide and water. Uh, we notice the oxidation number of oxygen decreases from zero to negative two. The oxidation number of carbon increases from negative four to plus four. We see that the chemical species transfer electrons to one another. Um, this is actually the definition of a redox reaction. In chemical terms, a redox reaction usually involves a reduction reaction and an oxidation reaction. Reduction reaction causes the chemical species to gain electrons and become more negatively charged. For example, um, copper two ions reduces to copper metal. And this is a reduction reaction. An oxidation reaction causes the chemical species to lose electrons and become more positively charged. For instance, iron metal oxidizes to iron two ions. And this is an oxidation reaction. A half reaction is either a reduction or oxidation reaction. So each of the two half reactions, um, I mean, each of the two reactions is a half reaction. And, and this is a redox reaction. It consists, usually consists of one oxidation reaction and one reduction reaction. An oxidizing agent is reduced in a redox reaction, whereas a reducing agent is oxidized in a reaction. Uh, this, is, this is confusing at first, but memorize uh, the agents, definition of agents like this. Uh, a reducing agent reduces the number of electrons uh, it has, which is the same as saying that it oxidizes. So here we know that we see that iron metal oxidizes. So it is the reducing agent. Reducing agent oxidizes. And we see that copper two ions reduces to copper metal. So we say it is the oxidation oxidizing agent. An oxidizing agent reduced is reduced in a redox reaction. Um, this is the chemical reaction for the rusting of iron. Uh, iron two hydroxide is produced. Um, below are the two half reactions. We see that iron is oxidized in the redox reaction. We can call it the reducing agent. And oxygen is reduced. Uh, from a charge of zero to a charge of negative two in the reaction. So we call it the oxidizing agent. Uh, we will learn more about electrical chemical cells later in the unit. Here is just an introduction. So your left is an electrical chemical cell. It is a system that produces electrical energy. Let me show you how it works. The voltmeter measures the voltage across the two electrodes. An electrode is basically an, a conductor. And this is the salt bridge. What is happening in this, in this electro, electrical chemical cell is um, 
every time copper metal dissociates into water, two electrons are produced. Where the where do the two electrons go? Well, they go through this wire. The electrons flow from anode to cathode. This is some spontaneous reaction. Uh, I will elaborate more in next the, the next section. Now, when the electrons arrive at the silver metal, the silver ions in the solution are attracted to the electrons, and silver metal forms. So eventually, all the copper that's in the solution will be used up to produce silver metal on the right. I hope you can see that this is an oxidation and this is a reduction reaction by now. Charge of plus one to zero, charge of zero to plus two. Moving on, the standard reduction potentials table. This this table can also be found at the last page of Hablin Chemistry 12 textbook. Uh, this, the arrows uh, refer to similar things uh, compared to the relative strengths of acids and bases table. On the left, as we move up the table, the oxidizing agents increases in strengths in other words, the agents have an increasing tendency to reduce. On the on the right, as we go down the table, the reducing agents are increasing in strength. In other words, the agents have an increasing tendency to oxidize. Here are the similarities between the two tables. The species at the upper left have a great tendency to go forward, while the species at the lower right have a great tendency to go backward. Every reaction in the standard potential reduction potentials table can either go forward or backward. So even though there is only one arrow, the rea reaction can actually go backwards. For example, if gold metal is uh, reacting with some other reagents, then it put and it oxidizes into gold three ions. When one species in the reaction is present, we do not assume the other species in the reaction are also present. Like I said earlier, when the species reacts, the reaction moves to the other side of the react equation. There are two rules to, uh, to apply when you determine whether a reaction is spontaneous. If two reactants are only found on the left or only found on the right, then no reaction occurs. A spontaneous reaction only occurs if the higher rea reactant undergoes reduction and the lower reactant undergoes oxidation. Otherwise, the reaction is non-spontaneous. Let's look at some examples. Do those reactants react? F2 and Cl- we see that F2 is above Cl minus on the table. So yes, the reduction of F2 is higher than the oxidation of Cl minus. 
Yeah, yeah, there is a spontaneous reaction. What about Cl2 and F minus? No, because the reduction of Cl2 is lower than the oxidation of F F minus. You add acidic uh, permanganate and gold react. Yes, the reaction requires the presence presence of hydrogen ions, and the equation provides an acidic solution. The reduction of permanganate into Mn2 uh, plus is higher than the oxidation of gold into Au3 plus. Do alkaline permanganate and gold react? No. The spontaneous reaction requires an acidic solution or the presence of hydrogen ions. Topic number three. We now learn how to balance redox reactions. We, ha we have to first learn how to balance half reactions. So this is the order of balancing to balance a half reaction occurring in an acidic solution. You have to memorize this. This is like the, the mathematical operation, like bad math. You cannot change the order, otherwise you make, otherwise you make mistakes. So step number one: balance the major atoms which are any atoms other than oxygen and hydrogen. Two, balance the oxygen atoms by adding water to a side without oxygen, because reactions normally occur in water. Balance the hydrogen uh, atoms by adding hydrogen ions. And then, balance the overall charge by adding electrons. Let's look at an example. So we see that PBs are already balanced. So we finished step one. And then we add water to the equation to balance the hydrogen, the oxygen. There are two oxygens on the right. So we added two H2O molecules, two old balance. Three, we balance the hydrogen atoms by adding hydrogen ions. There are two times two equals four hydrogen ions on the left, and there's only one hydrogen ion on the right. So we add three. And eventually, we balance the overall charge by adding electrons. Overall charge on the left is zero, and the overall charge on the right is minus one plus three times plus one. So that is equals to two. We add two electrons, and the overall charge on the right becomes zero. To balance a basic uh, half reaction or a half reaction occurring in a basic environment. Um, on top of steps one to four, we've seen earlier, we have to add water equilibrium in reaction. That is um, H plus plus OH minus equals water. In such a way, to cancel all the hydrogen ions in the acidic half reaction. Uh, you don't have to cancel the, uh, the water molecules. So we have to balance this equation in a basic solution. 
Remember, we have to add the water equilibrium equation in such a way to cancel all the hydrogen ions in the acidic redox reaction. So, on the left of the redox reaction, um, there is none. There is no hydrogen ion. On the right, we have three hydrogen ions. So, we, we multiply the water equilibrium system, uh, equation by three. So that we can cancel the three hydrogen ions. And this is our answer. Okay, now there are two half reaction masses uh, introduced in this unit. Uh, the first one is the half reaction method. Again, there is a, an order of steps that you must follow. You'll get used to the steps once you practice uh, questions. 1. Separate the equation into two half reactions. Uh, I call them the major atom pairs. You'll see what I mean. 2. Balance the individual half reaction. 3. Multiply the half reactions by whole numbers such as such that electrons lost in one reaction equals electrons gained in another reaction. 4. Convert the balanced redox equation to basic conditions if needed. The first step is to split the equation into two half reactions. The first half reaction involves OS and the second half involves I. Sometimes there are, there are more than one major atom involved in each half reaction. But for the simpler redox reactions, there is none. Uh, the second step is to balance individual half reactions. Using everything we learned, so step one, we balance the major atoms. Step two, we we add the water molecule to balance the oxygen on uh, in the reaction. And three, we add a hydrogen. To balance the added water uh, water molecules, and the last step is to add the uh, electrons to balance the overall charge of the reaction, and then we multiply the half reactions by whole numbers so that um, the electrons lost in one reaction. So. It is, it is produced in one direction, reaction equals the, rea the electrons gained in the other reaction. So this uh, reaction takes 10 electrons. So we find their least common multiple. The least common multiple between 8 and 10 is 40. Multiplied by 10 by 4 and 8 by 5, we get 40. And so they are cancelled out. And this is our answer. Oxidation number method. Uh, this method is slightly more confusing uh, once you actually do the question. First, balance major atoms. Then, find the changing oxidation number of each major atom. Now, if one form of this atom or ion, either on the left or on the right side of the redox reaction, has a subscript greater than 1, then the overall uh, changing oxidation number of the ion equals to changing oxidation number per atom multiplied by the subscript. AKA the number of atoms 
for ions. 3. Multiply each half reaction of each species such that, such that the total changing uh, oxidation number becomes zero. And finally, balance the hydrogens by adding hydrogens, uh, hydrogen ions for acidic solution or by adding OH- minus for basic solutions. And lastly, balance the O's by adding water molecules. To balance this equation in the basic solution, like always, we first balance major atoms. Then we find the changing ON per ion. For example, on the left, AS has a uh, positive charge of 3, oxidation number of 3. And on the right, AS has an oxidation number of minus 3. So the changing OM per AS is negative 6. However, there is more than 1, one AS per species on the left. The two AS in AS2 or O3. So the change should be multiplied by 2. The, cha uh, the equation here means the changing ON per AS, which is negative 6, times by the subscript, the higher sub subscript of the 2, which is 2 equals negative 12. And then we multiply each half reaction of each species such that the overall, uh, the total changing ON equals zero. Again, we find the least common multiple. Okay, what is the least common multiple between 12 and 2? It's 12. So we multiply 2 by 6. By six. And then eventually, uh, we add the OH minus to the equation because where uh, the question asked for a basic solution. After that, we balance the added oxygen by adding and added hydrogen by adding water molecules. Thank you for watching.